Hey everyone, Johnny here with A and J Definitely Wood back with another video. In this video, I show the process that I take to prepare, stain, and add protection to my work pieces. As a beginner wood worker, I only have about seven months of experience. I didn't know much about staining or even preparing before a stain and then what kind of protection to add. So I try to compile this video to show all the steps necessary to have a good looking quality product at the end. The end result is really nice. It took me a while to get something like this out. The first couple of pieces that I did look nothing like this and it's because I didn't have, um, I guess that experience or the, the knowledge of uh, how, to, how to do this. So. My goal here is to share my experience, share my journey as a beginner woodworker for other beginner woodworkers and hopefully experienced woodworkers can chime in and uh, you know let me know of anything that I need to be aware of and, and others to be aware of as well. So if you haven't done so already, please like and subscribe to this video. It's going to help me to make more videos, uh, kind of just showing my experience, showing my journey as I go along making these different projects. And learning different techniques I want to share everything that I've learned so far and help encourage other people to pursue the same thing if they're thinking about it or they've already started and they're kind of just uh, wondering what to do so here I have a 65 inch piece that I'm working on for my chimney uh, it's so that we can hang our Christmas stockings without messing up our mantle uh, it's a super easy project that I put together um, it's just made out of uh, one by fives and then I just ripped this one to two and a half inches very easy um, I'm not showing that on this video but I'm going to start um, showing you how I start to sand this down here I have my orbital sander and then I'm going to start off with uh, an 80 grit and then I'll move up to 150 and then finish off with the 240. I typically take these this three-step process to um, to get a really nice finish. I found that you know if you skip some, uh, you won't get that good of a finish on some of your pieces uh, when it comes to staining. And then when you add the poly uh, acrylic, it doesn't look as good or feel as good. Um, but if you do three steps, I'm telling you, you're gonna get a nice result. Now. I use an orbital sander opposed to a sheet sander. If you have a sheet sander, that's fine, but sometimes uh, I've noticed that it'll leave little lines. I'm not sure if it's because uh, of the one that I had or that's just the tendency of the machines to do that, but I found that orbital sanders because uh, this is a random orbiting sander, meaning that it's gonna start moving in random directions. It won't leave um, marks. So the sheet sander goes, uh, rotates back and forth and so that'll start leaving lines if you're not careful. As to this random orbital, just starts shaking everywhere and um, randomly won't leave you any lines. Um, so don't worry if your wood looks pretty crappy. When you sand it down, I mean, just look at how nice it's gonna look after you're done. So don't worry about the look of the wood at the beginning. Um, obviously, the better looking, the less work you have to put in, but um, don't worry so much about it. You can't always clean it up and this is what it's going to start looking like and you can feel that it's a lot smoother than um, this other part let's take a close look at the piece that i'm working with you can see that it's pretty rough it's in really rough shape but i'm not too concerned because i know that i'll be able to clean this up after just one pass you can see the drastic difference in this wood it looks really clean looks real nice and I promise you guys I didn't switch this this is the same one that I was working on earlier this is step one I'm gonna move on to step two and three just a small disclaimer whenever you're woodworking there's a lot of sawdust and you need to protect yourself sawdust can cause a lot of lung damage so I use respirator whenever I'm working when I first started, I used um, a simple mask, which is enough, but I wanted to up my protection and get this guy 
off on Amazon. It was relatively inexpensive and definitely worth it. I can definitely feel the difference between this one and the cloth mask that I was wearing before. I'll drop a link underneath so that you guys can check that out. Once you get that third step in, you can really feel how smooth it is. I mean, it's super smooth. We're almost ready to stain it, but we need to remove the, that fine, fine dust that's still settled on top of the wood. And if you just run your hand, you'll see, you know, the little bit of that dust that's still there. So what I like to do is I'll grab a paper towel or a shop towel or whatever with some water. You're just going to kind of just go over it and kind of just pick that dust up. Uh, if you have a shop vac, that'll probably be good as well. Uh, anything to kind of just avoid dissipating the, the dust into the air. I wouldn't recommend trying to brush this off. Uh, you're just going to release the air, the dust into the air. And those particles are very, very fine. So I think those are probably even more harmful to you in your lungs. Because they're so fine, you can't see them. So just run a wet towel all over your piece and get it ready. Now that we're getting ready to stain, um, I actually like to use pre-stain because sometimes what happens with pine, um, it gets kind of blotchy in some areas. So you'll see if you don't use pre-stain, some areas of the wood absorbs the color more than other areas. So then you get these kind of blotches everywhere. Um, I found that with using pre-stain, it actually helps um, reduce that quite a bit, uh, kind of makes it uniform all throughout the wood so um i definitely would suggest that you get some of this what i'd like to do is i'll use some gloves anytime i'm using any kind of chemicals or anything i'll use gloves i'm always about you know ppe and keeping yourself safe and you just never know what this with uh any the stuff <clears throat> instead of using a brush i like to use an old piece of cloth uh, if you got old t-shirts that'll work um this was used to be one of my shirts so that usually works and it kind of helps keep your closet clean if you got some stuff that you need to get rid of that's a pretty good way of, do, of doing it <clears throat> so i'll pre-stain this up and then after that i'll let it sit for about 20 30 minutes and after that i'll apply the the stain so let's uh let's apply this pre-stain first and then we'll take a look at what that looks like this is what the piece looks like after i applied the uh, pre-stain it almost gives it like a natural look but you can definitely tell that it's been um, it's been applied there. Try to be very generous with the amount of pre-stain that you use. It's going to help the wood absorb as much as the stain as possible. To get ready to stain, I personally like to use a foam brush. Um, I feel like I have more control of uh, the stain. But, you know, a lot of people use different things. I encourage you guys to try it out, experiment with a regular brush, experiment with cloth. There's many different ways to apply stain and see what works best with, for you. Um, so I'm going to use this. Um, I use a regular shop paper towel to dry the excess. So first I'll apply the stain, wait maybe 30 seconds to about a minute and then I'll wipe the excess off. I'll, I'll show you guys how I apply the stain um, with the foam brush. What I like to do for something like this, because it's pretty long, um, I'll start off on one end, apply the, the stain, and then when I get maybe to halfway point, I'll start wiping the excess off and then continuing, continuing on and then do the same thing um, over there. So let's get started. And I like to be very generous with the uh, the stain that I use. And when you're applying the stain, you want to um, go with the green, right? Going side to side in this case, depending on um, your wood. And if you're not sure what that means, going with the green, um, that just means that you're going along with uh, the lines that you see on the wood. That's called the green of the wood. So I'm already at the <clears throat> the halfway 
point, I'm going to start wiping off the excess and you're going to see the how nice it looks with the green. And when you're wiping the excess, same thing, go with the grain of the wood. That's going to help avoid seeing any circles or odd odd shapes on your on your wood. That looks pretty good. That looks pretty great actually. And then we continue on to the other side, do the same thing. We're gonna let this dry for a little bit. Um, this thing here claims that it dries in one hour. Probably it does, but I like to leave things overnight. I'll let this dry for a bit and then I'll flip it over to start doing the other side. Uh, I invested in these little um, stands that, that can hold your pieces up in the air so that you're not touching um, the tabletop or whatever it is that you're using to hold your part up. Uh, they're like little cones I'll show you in a bit they hold it off the, the surface so that you don't mess your piece up or your workbench or tabletop that you're using here are those cones that I was talking about earlier that's holding my work piece from the surface of my bench so that it gives me the opportunity to work on the other side without having to completely wait for the other side to dry. And this is what they look like. Um, they're relatively cheap. I think I got a set for, I don't know, like 10 or 12 bucks or something like that. I'll drop a link in the description. I just wanted to point out on um, this piece, I did not apply the pre-stain on the underside. Nobody's really going to look at this. This is going to be face down. Um, so it doesn't really matter. But I wanted to point out the blotch that I was talking about. Like right here, you can kind of see uh, how light it is. And then definitely one big light spot there, light spot there. Then there, you've got these dark areas. I mean, it's just kind of all over the place, if you ask me. I mean, there's certain areas that's pretty nice. Like right here, it kind of seems pretty good. But then... You still have your your um, your light lane, and then a dark lane, and then a white lane. So this is what it looks like if you don't use the pre-stain. Um, if you're happy with that, then you know by all means you don't need to do it. But I personally don't like it. Um, let's flip it over and take a look at the other side for comparison. So on this side, you can see that it's a lot more even than the other side. You can still see a little blotchiness, but compared to the other side, this is way better. So this is it. We're just going to leave it drying overnight. Tomorrow, I will apply the polycrylic and you guys will get to see what steps I take to ensure the smoothest finish on something like this. I use a fan to kind of expedite the process. I don't think I've ever seen anybody do it. I do it. I don't know. Thoughts? I left this drying overnight. It looks great. I love the way it's coming out. It's really smooth to the touch. The next step is adding the polycrylic. I'll show you guys how I add it. I add three layers. And in between layers, I sand down using very, very, very fine sandpaper. And I'll explain to you why. Uh, so my background is in engineering. This is something that I learned in school. And uh, when I was learning it, I thought to myself, when in the world is this going to become useful? And a couple years later, here we are. And I'm like, wow, I actually remember this stuff from school. Okay, so... At the surface of any piece of wood, <clears throat> from afar, to you and I, it looks pretty straight, right? But when you touch it, you can feel the, the roughness. If you observe that surface at a microscopic level, 
this is something that you'll probably see. You'll see like little peaks and dips all across the surface. Um, that's what you're feeling with when you go across with your fingers. You can feel the little peaks and the little dips, right? So when you run, say, a course, um, that should be an E. You can tell I'm an engineer. Uh, when you run a coarse sandpaper, you'll sort of remove the peaks and um, get get something that's closer to being leveled out. When you use a fine, you can see that you're removing a lot more of the peaks and getting closer to having a nice, um, fine, smooth surface. And you do extra fine, I mean, you're just getting really, really close to um, you know having a perfect, nice little surface. Uh, I never thought that I'd be giving a lecture on, on surface roughness, but uh, I hope this kind of helps explain uh, why we go from coarse to fine and extra fine when we're sanding down. It's a process. Sure, you can slap on an extra fine sandpaper to your sander, but you're going to eat that sandpaper up really quick. So that's why it's a, always a good idea to start off with the coarse sandpaper and then start kind of moving up. Uh, the grid size until you get something nice and fine. Once we get to a nice acceptable surface, we apply the polycrylic. With the polycrylic, what that's going to do is when you add add onto it, it's going to fill in these these uh, little dips, right? That first layer, and then when you feel it, you're going to feel that it's rough, right? So as you're applying layers. We're going to use extra fine sandpaper to, to try to get it as smooth as possible and as, as even as possible. And you can try this at home. I encourage you guys to, to do some experimentation with some scrap pieces of wood. Um, go ahead and, you know, try it out for yourself. Um, feel the, the wood and, and you'll see what I'm talking about when you do that. The polycrylic or polyurethane that I use is the Verathane brand. I used to use a general finish which was actually twice the amount of this one. General finish I think I was buying it for about 30, 33 bucks or something like that and this comes out to about 16 or 17 bucks. So half the price, same amount, same performance, same quality. I, I don't know why the other one's priced so high. It's almost double the amount and, and this works just great. Um, I use the water base because I, it makes it a lot easier to clean my tools. Uh, you can see here that this brush I've used it a couple of times. Um, you just clean it with some soap and water and you can reuse your tools again. Same same idea. Um, you know, you dip in your brush and you want to go with the grain. Um, I try to be pretty generous as well with, uh, with this stuff. That's all you're doing, you're just, you're just going with the grain. Now I'll do this exact same technique all across and uh, I'll show you guys what I do after. One thing to note, don't worry about that milky look. <clears throat> it'll all dry and it'll become clear. So don't worry about it, um, just do try to spread it all out nice and even and wait for it to dry. Um, what I do is I try to expedite it by using a little fan and uh, yeah, try to get this done as fast as possible. This does take a while, it'll take about 20 minutes or so to dry. Here's a tip that I'm going to share. When you're doing this uh, staining and the polycrylic have multiple pieces to be ready to work on so that you've got something to do while you're waiting for something to dry, right? So I've got this other piece that uh, that I had finished as well and needed the uh, polycrylic. If you can have two to three pieces at a time, I think that'll be best because then you get to spend roughly 10 minutes on each piece. By the time you're done with the third one, you've got like maybe half an hour that's gone by or, or 20 minutes that's gone by. Here's another tip. While you're waiting for these things to dry, don't work on another piece that involves cutting or sanding other pieces of wood because you'll get dust particles on these pieces that you're waiting for to dry and you'll be able to tell. You'll be able to see it. So 
Learn from my mistakes. Don't work on other pieces. That's why you want to work on two or three at a time. And then do the finishes all at the same time. And once you're done, you can start uh, moving on to the next, your next project. This step is really, really important. Um, when you sand it down, use uh, the hand sanding method. I have this uh, handle here that I bought online. You can get these at uh, any local big box store or online. Uh, I use the 800. You don't have to go that high, but trust me when I tell you this, when you go this high and you uh, sand down the surface, it's gonna be so smooth. It's it's beautiful. So I would recommend you know going as high as, as uh, or whatever you want you know you you choose but you'll you'll see the difference if you experiment and get a couple uh, grit slices and see what you like best um, I find that 800 is is awesome and this thing is super easy to use you just clamp it on and you're ready to rock and roll when you're sanding this down just again everything has to go with the green you're gonna lightly pass it. You're not gonna put any pressure whatsoever. You just wanna get the uh, the hard surfaces out. And soon you're gonna start seeing, um, I guess like white dust. And that white dust is actually the polycrylic, the peaks of the polycrylic. So don't worry about it. You're, we're gonna brush this off. We're gonna do multiple layers. I like to do three coats, me personally. When you're done with the third coat, it's gonna look really nice. And this is all you do. You just very lightly along the grain work your piece. I'm not even I'm not even putting any downward pressure. I'm just using the weight of the actual handle to do the work. And you can see you can see the dust. I don't know if you can see that. So I'm just gonna do that for uh, for this entire piece and then I'm gonna add another coat. You're gonna repeat this process two or three times. Once you're done sanding down the first layer, just run your hand by to kind of feel any rough spots where you're, wherever you feel any rough spots, go ahead and just give it a nice little pass until it's nice and smooth to your liking. To deal with uh, round edges, what I do is Instead of using this flat um, pattern, I'll go ahead and remove it and just do it by hand. And very lightly just go over this, uh, this edge. If you do this with uh, this, it's actually going to probably eat through. We don't want that, right? Because we already got the stain, we've got the polycrylic, we made it this far. The last thing we want to do is ruin it. So just very lightly. On the corners, on the edges, and you can feel the difference. I mean, it is like night and day difference. The parts that you you haven't gone over, you can feel it's pretty rough. And as soon as you you sand it with this, very lightly, I mean, very different. I mean, this thing is already coming along really nicely. It's gonna look beautiful. And this is what's gonna set you apart. From other people some people like to kind of cut corners and skip this process or just kind of try to do it all quickly take your time trust me at the end the end result is going to be a good quality product that you're going to be very proud to sell or to gift or whatever it is that you're you're working on so take your time all right take pride in the work I know it's a lot of work but it's going to be worth it To remove the dust off of this, we're going to use the same technique that we used before, where we take a cloth and we damp it a little bit with some water and we just um, wipe a little bit. You can see here that I've already started wiping and you can tell the difference, right? It's picking up that dust. And already you're going to see how beautiful this is going to turn out to be. So let's, uh, let's clean this up and we'll see what it looks like. This is what it's starting to look like after my first pass and cleaning it up. It's starting to come along. 
I've added the second layer, so now I'm going to wait for this to dry. I have noticed that when I apply the second layer, it tends to dry a lot quicker. Um, and I like to believe that on the first layer, uh, it's it's sealing the wood, right? So it's making contact with, uh, with the wood and I guess the outside of it. And on the second coat, we're applying it on top of the polycrylic that was already on there. So the first layer. Uh, so it's already kind of like a, uh, I don't know, like a plastic feel to it. And so I just feel like it, it just dries a lot quicker. I don't know. But already you can kind of see that we're starting to see some, some shine into this wood. You can kind of already see, look at that, you can see the reflection of the fan there. So you can tell that because we're, we're polished, we're not polishing it, but giving it a nice fine sand, you're also giving it a nice, um, I guess, mirror-like, finish to it and it's it's looking beautiful so we're gonna set this uh we're gonna let this dry i'm gonna work on my second piece and do the same thing um we're gonna sand it down again once it's dry and we're gonna apply the third and final layer after the third and final layer is placed you can see that this thing came out beautiful you can see the shininess, you can see that it's gonna be well protected, you're gonna see that it's gonna last, you can see reflection. I mean, this thing is awesome. I'm super excited, I'm gonna put this up. This one is from, from me, I made this piece for myself. I'll show you guys where it's gonna go, but before I do, um, let me show you one last thing that I do. I'm gonna sand this down one more time and then I'm gonna apply some uh, paste wax. For this last and final step, I use Johnson's paste wax and a steel wool. Any, any steel wool will do. What we're gonna do here is we're gonna put some, a little bit of elbow grease here, really get that paste wax inside the material. And then we're gonna give it a wipe with a microfiber cloth. So basically what we're doing here is sort of adding like a polishing effect um, and it's another layer of protection for the wood. <clears throat> Since this is going to go on the mantle of my chimney, it's going to add another protection, another layer of protection that I'm going to need. I have there uh, a VCR, my, my cable box, my Apple TV. So I've got a couple devices up there that, that it's going to sit on top of, on top of this piece. So I definitely want to protect this and make sure that it lasts long. Additionally, I'm adding this so that I can add Christmas stockings. Uh, I promised my wife that I was gonna do this a while back. I'm totally late on this, so. <sighs> you know, I got pushed into doing this and expediting this process, so. Here I am, trying to make the wife happy. But, um, one last thing, I'm gonna do the other side underneath i'm just going to add two layers i'm really not going to be too much too worried about the sanding and making sure that it's nice and smooth because it's on the on the underside um typically anything that's not going to be seen touched or or anything i don't really do a whole lot of work i just do you know bare minimum to kind of get by i uh, definitely don't want to look in like crap but you know you don't have to put that much effort or care into it since it's going to be on the bottom uh, but for this, I'm going to just wipe it with, uh, with the wax and then give it a nice little polish with the microfiber. We're going to do the same technique that we've done in the past where we're going to go with the grain. So you want to grab yourself a nice chunk of, of paste wax and just, just rub it on there. Just rub it on top of uh, your workpiece. All right, just get it in there. It's like waxing a car. All right, we've, you've got the, the polyurethane, at, think of it as the clear coat. And when you wax it, you're gonna give it a nice shine to it. You're gonna add, give it a, another uh, layer of protection. Um, so yeah, this is pretty much that analogy. I think that fits perfect to what we're doing here.
once you've applied the uh, the wax, you're just gonna get a just a regular microfiber cloth or any cloth. You can use a cotton cloth um, to wipe this, and you're just gonna just wipe the excess off. And just like polishing, um, once you start removing this and kind of like buffing it, giving like a nice little buff, you'll see you'll see the beautiful shine that's left on this uh, on this workpiece. Just want you to see the difference. This side I've already hand polished, and this side you can see that it still got has the uh, the wax, so it's got like an opaque color. But as you're as you're wiping it down, what I normally do is I'll use one side of the rag to sort of wipe the excess off, right? So you see that excess that's sitting on top. I'm just trying to remove it. Once you've made some progress, you just flip the rag over. Move the camera and just do a quick little polish. It is a lot of work, but it is worth it. I mean, this this is what I do to all my work pieces. Um, it just gives it that beautiful quality look. It looks like it's straight out of the store. You can see the shininess. You can see how how well I made this and uh, you could do the same and I encourage you to do the same because this is this is something to to be really proud of and it's a beautiful piece so I'm gonna do the rest give me some time I gotta catch my breath after 10 minutes and catching my breath I finally finished look at that Compare this to what we started with. It is a process, it does take a while. And uh, you know, if you're if you're one of my customers watching one of my videos, this is what I do to all work pieces. I take the time to make sure that it's done correctly and you get a beautiful, good quality looking piece. I mean, just look at that. There's the final product. Those are the stockings that I was talking about. And these are my built-ins. As you can see, I think I did a pretty good job at matching the color, you can't even tell. It looks great, it looks good. I was able to drill some, uh, some hooks underneath. You don't wanna mess up the, the mantle there. You can see this. It's right on top. 